Okay, so in this video we're going to talk about uh, some creative problem solving in Gaia. And uh, at the same time I'm going to show you this little setup that I've got here, which has got me turning this into this, and then to this, uh, adding overall detail to the form and shape. So um, what's kind of cool with this is I can go ahead and change the resolution. And it still functions okay. So I still go from from that to that to that. So what I started with with this was one general thought. I had a Perlin, and I wanted to convert it into uh, something that I could sort of express the grooves a little bit better. So I got that Perlin noise. I'm going to take this and I'm going to uh, plug it in. And that's going to become that. So the um, areas that were peaks, some of the peaks will remain. And I was looking for these grooves in there. So the first thing that I had to do was I had to blur it out in order to get rid of some of the detail and then use this to bring some of that crispness back. So I'm taking this and I'm converting this um, into that. So how, do we go, how would we go about that? Well, let's first get in there a little bit closer. I'm going to bring this up a little bit so I can reach it. So I've got this I take it and invert it, and what that does is it puts what was previously the high points downwards. And the reason that I'm doing this is because I want to use flow map. There are a number of tools which use the idea of rainfall in order to function. They're going to flow downwards, and that means that they're going to create channels and stuff like that in these, these base areas. And so flow map is one of those. If I switch to this, you can see how that represents itself we're getting these areas in the lower regions. Uh, I went through it and turned off the constant rainfall and adjusted rain cycles until I got something that I kind of liked. And then of course I went ahead and did a blur on that in order to kind of refine it a little bit. Just spread it out. Now when I've done this you'll notice that it's turned into a mesh. And a mesh that doesn't look really anything like the uh, original. This is just a representation of the black and white values of this in its blurred state. In some cases um, you'll switch to a blur like I'm going from here to a curvature which is getting the lower regions and when I blur it out it remains giving me that black and white data and yet in this particular case it becomes geometry. Some nodes will do that. Um, I don't know if that's uh, a bug or an intended feature, uh, but uh, at the moment that's what it's doing. And so a solution is to get a clutter node, which is your uh, color lookup table. And I've got it plugged into the original shape here, going in here. And um, if I were to just go ahead and plug this into the top input, which is controls visualization, I could then see what this looks like relative to that. And I've just turned it into sort of a heat map kind of idea where I can separate the different zones and really view them. After this, I switch to aperture. And again, it's looking like mesh. So if I just go ahead and plug that in there, we can go ahead and see what that's done with it. Taking this information and then um, running it through here and that's taking all those peak areas and making them what I want. Then we go through this space and the curvature map again is uh, something that works by isolating grooves so it's looking for the grooves. 
and it's got some you know weird spider-like things going on here again based on the idea of flow etc um, but really what I'm concerned with is the grooves and so that's what I wanted by taking that and blurring it I've isolated some of those areas and then using aperture I can then squeeze that in again so changing my settings expand iterations and I'm getting an isolation of those areas but sort of as a gradient that's what I want I want you know um, sharp in there but somewhat smooth still and then I'm inverting that for use here to give me that now these two will be combined together as subtract. I'm taking this information and I'm subtracting this information and the end result is this which I then plug into just a regular constant node which is just gives me a height variable and I get something like this. So this could be used with the idea of trying to create something along the lines of, of sand dunes that might be um, not necessarily the same way that you might see them in the desert, but um, it, it works for maybe along the beach, lots of people sort of stepping in different regions and creating those, those footprints. Or um, some areas of desert where they'll have like lumpy areas and then you can insert like a, a mountainous rock area that, that works in there as well. So that's the goal. This is what I wanted to do. So this is my creative problem solving. It's going through and trying to figure out what the tools do, how they like to function best in order to give yourself the information that you want. So once again, I wanted the peaks of this. And because I wanted the peaks of this, I had to think, how can I isolate these? How can I make them sharp? What can I do? I could make them sharp just by shoving them through an aperture. Aperture would then squeeze all of these. That would function just fine. But what it would do as a result, though, is it would expand any of the gaps that I have here. Um, so these little contour areas would have been affected. I could probably try and come up with another solution to this. Um, I could go ahead and use something again like uh, this tool where I've got uh, aperture kind of functioning here in order to create this mask and I could use this mask perhaps to drive another aperture which would control the actual uh, geometry. How about we give that a try? I'll go ahead and create another aperture node. I'll take that and plug it in. And my goal here is to contract. And I want to get those pinched regions. And I'll go ahead and use this as a mask. And as a mask, what does it do? It's gone ahead and isolated those regions that I wanted to keep. And it's still giving me these ridges. So that's another solution to something very similar. Now there's a little bit of an artifact issue um, within this region and there may be other solutions to try and smooth that out or, or get rid of that, that issue. I could take it into sculpting software and certainly go ahead and smooth that stuff out. That would be an easy solution to go into ZBrush and, and mess with that. But there are other potential uh, solutions where I could go ahead and do things like picking angles and choosing primarily the angle data or um, again isolating the top ridges and the bottom ridges and then just doing um, the area in between them and that would work as well. So uh, Again, this process is trying to figure out what it is you want to do. What is it ultimately that you need? If you look at any kind of landscape, you look at the general ingredients, what it is you have to create, and then start looking through the tools and playing with them. So if you're brand new to, to Gaia and you haven't really messed with this stuff, um, 
I would recommend approaching it like a child does. If you've got, you know, a small niece or nephew or a child of your own, or maybe you work with children, um, and uh, you've seen them in front of technology, often cases they'll click every button, try everything out, and the next thing you know, you know, they're they're hacking NASA by the time they're twelve. Um, it's it's this no care attitude where they go ahead, they try something out, they explore it, they play with the buttons, and if it breaks or it crashes, no big deal. They don't have an investment in what it is they're trying to create in that moment. They're just trying to understand what's going on. And uh, they can just go ahead and restart the program again if everything goes wrong. So do things as an exploration in order to try and figure out how everything works. Don't um, consider every single time that you step in here that you're going to make a masterpiece. You have to learn, and part of learning comes from exploration. And once you've got the rules down, then you can start creatively using them in order to get what you need based on what you know these different tools will do. So hopefully this has been a useful sort of lesson. And uh, um, keep in mind this little trick as well, uh, the, the clutter node creating sort of like a heat map. You can plug that in and, and kind of figure out where you're isolating things may help with visualization. So again, you just take whatever your original shape is, plug into the visualization, and then anything else that you're not visualizing the way that you wanted to, you can go plug it in and you can either use something like this or grayscale or whatever. Okay, hope that was useful. See you later.